Let's talk ETFs. Tim Urbanoes is with us, Head of Research and Investment Strategy, Innovator ETFs. Thank you for being here. Glad you're here. Great to see you. Well, you know, when we talk about the big picture of this market, we were just finishing saying how August, November, I'm sorry, August, September, October, you know, were tough until it sort of turned around. Um, now we're in a different position where we've had five weeks of gains. Well, how do you feel about the market and where does the ETF play come in? Yeah, so Nicole, it's it's really interesting. When we look at this market right now, it, it's playing out exactly as we've seen historically. When the Fed pauses, everybody gets excited. Inflation's you know coming down. Everybody's expecting rates to come down. The excitement's there. Equities tend to rally. We believe we're right in the middle of that rally right now. Mm. But you can't lose sight of the big picture as well. And you know we think risk management right now is is very very important. And you got to consider the starting point where we're at. The valuation run up that we've seen this year. You can't expect that to continue. So we're in a market now where we think you're you're going to see lower growth but you know, still positive, so you need mm. to be in equities, but gotta make sure you're, you're managing that risk well. So as we go into 2024, I mean, how would you say folks should be positioned or what should they be thinking about doing? Well, you need to position for low returns in, in, in our view. We, we still think the economy can grow, but do so at a slower pace. Right. If you look at the labor market, there's still a lot of slack that needs to come out. So we don't see that recession playing out, which means we still think earnings can grow. But again, Nicole, I think you have to consider that starting point. You've seen a huge run up this year with valuations. That's taking away upside from the, the future. So when we look at different ideas for 2024, one of our top ideas in our outlook are, are strategies with built-in risk management and also acceleration in them. Um, so top idea, XBJA. This strategy gives you 2x the upside exposure to the S&P 500 ETF to a cap of about 18% while also providing a 9% buffer against losses on the downside. Mm. So in the event that we have a low growth scenario, you do have that acceleration to really help boost those low returns. If, if we're wrong and you do see the recession play out, you have that buffer against losses. So really it's about covering a wide range of outcomes, really knowing the base, but covering the corners as well. Right, I see. So this is 2X and has a buffer on it, XBJA. Um, what else would you be looking at? I see a few others here. Well, you know, we talk to advisors right now, really over the last couple months, the consistent theme that has been coming up is they are struggling to keep their clients in the market. Right now, high net worth individuals are keeping about 34% of their assets in cash. Mm -hmm. That's a problem. They just missed out on the massive rally right. that Too we've much. seen this year. Yeah. Yeah. So it's really you know, strategies that can help them stay invested. Uh, one strategy that we're seeing a lot of interest in right now is TJUL. This is a uh, same category, defined outcome ETF. It has a buffer against the 100% of losses on the S&P 500 ETF over a two year outcome period with a cap of 16.6% .6 on the way up. So really just an alternative to cash, you gotta be in the market, you gotta capitalize on this rally, uh, but you're doing so with the built-in risk management, really taking a lot of uh, you know, the, 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 the concerns that investors are seeing and taking them off the table altogether. So I mean, when you say 100% downside protect, um, protection, Explain that to folks, because people would say that doesn't sound, that sounds too good to be true. I mean, explain that one. So more. it's point to point. So this, this right. ETF is, is a July series. So July uh, to, to July, two years later, if the market goes down anywhere from zero to 100%, you're fully protected from those it's losses, amazing. less fees. And then the trade-off here is you're capping your upside. So 16.6% over the next two years, if the S&P 500 ETF goes up 16.6% or less, you're going to capitalize. You make the whole thing. You're going to make the if whole thing. If it goes thing. up 20%, you don't get the full time. That, that's where right. the trade-off is. Right. So right. again, this is not something that we're out there saying this is an equity alternative. But for clients that are struggling, they're fearful, and they're going out to cash. And a lot of people are really nervous, of course, especially as they get older. Exactly. So we don't want to make this mistake that we've seen so prevalently this year, yeah. which is you're selling out. Very interesting. PNOV? Yeah, PNOV, that's a, that's a very popular strategy as well, the 15% buffer. So same category, defined outcome protects you against the first 15% of losses in the S&P 500 ETF, and then gives you upside exposure to a cap over one year mm -hmm. of about 15%. So this one, we're seeing more advisors use that as, as kind of a hybrid between the bond allocation right. and the equity allocation. But again, another way to, to stay invested in making sure that you're having those built-in levels of risk management. And I think really right now, what we are encouraging people to think about is, really what is the catalyst to drive the equity market up beyond the cap, right? You just had this huge run. You're not gonna be able to rely on valuations just driving market returns this year. We're gonna need to rely on earnings growth. 
earnings can grow, but are they really going to be growing, you know, 15, 20 percent? We don't see the catalyst for that. You do see some strength for small caps, right? We do, and there's a, and, and really when we look at small caps, what we're encouraging people to think about is, is focus on areas of the market where you're getting paid to take on the risk. So with an area like small caps, we, we think there's a lot of the bad news that is already priced in. No doubt small caps are much more sensitive to higher interest rates. They have about four times the floating rate debt that their large cap counterparts do. But a lot of that is priced in. We're seeing a significant discount, about one to one and a half standard deviations cheap relative to U.S. large cap equities. Mm -hmm. So we think it makes sense to really start nibbling, start taking on a position. Um, one of our ideas in our outlook here is KJAN. This is another mm. buffer ETF wow. uh, in the same category, 15% buffer on IWM. Right. with a cap on the upside of a little over 20 percent. So you got so, to keep an eye on all those. It, just a great way to start uh, really gaining some exposure. And what about the world of AI? People like to talk about AI. Uh, they like to invest in AI. I mean, where do you stand on something like that, like large cap growth? Well, there's certainly a lot of benefits. I, I think a lot of the good news is, has certainly been baked in. There's a lot of hype that is, has really yeah. driven the equity market higher. There's but you also focus on that? Well, it, it's important to focus on, but we also need to look at you know how long are those benefits going to take right. to be realized in the real economy. You look at you know, the introduction of the internet, it took a good amount of time for those benefits to really kick in, yeah. start spurring on growth. AI could be quicker, but again, think about the starting point and what's already priced in. Yeah, and you mentioned XBJA is a, one of the top picks. Why did that Why did that one stand out to you more? And what kind of fees, like when people talk about ETFs versus yeah. mutual funds, um, also explain the advantage of having an ETF, because there's usually a lot more liquidity and things like that, maybe yeah. fewer fees. Yeah, exactly. It comes down to fees. So any every defined outcome ETF we talked about today, very transparent in what the, the cost is, 79 basis points. To, to, to investors, so that's the, the, the only cost that is associated there, outside of trading fees, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, but really, you have the liquidity, you're able to get in and out whenever you want. The tax mm -hmm. efficiency, I think, is a big one, especially when we're talking cash alternatives, is remember, the ETF wrapper really puts you in a position where you can better control the, when you pay the taxes, mm -hmm. when you go to sell. Right. Uh, which is which is really important. Which people like that too, yeah. yeah exactly. To be advantageous without a doubt. Thanks, Tim. Great to see you. Great to see you too, Nicole. Uh, Tim Urbanowitz, Innovator ETFs. Thank you for joining us.